Ravel's 1968 Datsun 510. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, model car builders. Well, tonight we've got a special treat all the way from Japan. And I know a lot of people had this car. My sister had one, actually. This is a 1968 Datsun 510. This was one of those great old Japanese cars that actually hit the American market pretty hard and pretty well. This thing's cool. It had like the Jaguar independent rear axle in here, which is pretty cool for a Japanese two and four door little mini sedan subcompact. So without further ado, let's go down to our showroom, open up the lid and see what's in here. Now we wind the clock all the way back to 1968 where we get to see our first Japanese import model kit on this show which of course is the Datsun 510. My sister had one of these as a real car back in the 80s. This model kit is from Ravel. It was made in 2002. So we can just turn the box up. There's the call-out sheet of everything that's happening with this model, including the parts that are falling down inside. And we've got the edge of the box here. And here's the pictures we want to see. You get the yellow Datsun 510 option here, which is cool, and then the red and blue one, the tuner edition, which is on the box. And of course the end of the box looks much like the front. So now let's just take off the lid and see what we've got for contents in here. And of course we have our instructions and the decal sheet, as well as this nice little Datsun 510 body, the wheels and bags here, some plastic. We have two complete chrome trees, which is always nice. We've got our glass sprue, and then the white components. Some neat stuff in here for sure. Looks like I was starting on this one. Some cool details. The underpan and seat. Oh, a lot of neat stuff. Okay, so I'm going to clear this box out of the way and we will come back and take a look at all these amazing parts, including our instruction sheet. And here we have our instruction sheet with a bit of history on the Datsun 510. But I bought this in North Vancouver at Fine Scale Models on July 29th, 2003 for $19.50, which was pretty high price back then. Most models were still going around $10 to $15 Canadian. Anyway, I'll just read this bit. Datsun's little 510 coupe has been popular with performance enthusiasts for almost 30 years. Its low cost, lightweight, and great handling chassis make it a favorite as soon as it hit the streets. The car is still on the tuner scene today. This kit includes a detailed chassis with independent suspension and flared wheel well openings with contemporary tuner style decals, injected molded plastic, chrome plated parts and black vinyl tires. This kit is true, truly one for every collection. Well, I got it in my collection and here they give you a paint chart. So we're just going to move this in a bit. So this is a, more race-ready Datsun 510 motor because this one has the side carburetors and my sister's had an air cleaner in it so or a regular carburetor with an air cleaner so this is quite different you get your right and left hand side engines the fan the pulleys the engine front plate the distributor cap left and right hand side engine block valve cover to go on the top and an oil pan on the bottom exhaust headers and of course our four carburetors, which I believe are Weber carburetors. I could be mistaken. Prove me wrong in the comments below. <laughs> okay, then we have our frame with a firewall, windshield wiper motor, and a master cylinder for your brakes. Your foot pedals are going in here. This drops into this chassis. You get the shift lever and fire extinguisher, so the chassis is also the floor. Yes, this is a race-ready one because the rear seat panel has been covered over. And then our battery will drop into here. The interior. Oh, 
you do have the choice of putting your seat in. So you've got the three-piece bucket seats for the front and a two-piece rear bench seat which will drop in and then a steering column coming up into here. It does have the separate door mounted or door panels which is nice because then again you get that nice detail in there. We get a steering wheel down below as well as a windshield washer um, windshield washer tank going in here. Then some more on our engine, the final engine assembly. You're putting in your right and left motor mounts in, as well as your oil filter onto the engine block. And then we have our dri drive shaft going into the engine with the cross member coming in. And then this was a cool thing with the Datsun 510. It had basically a copy of the Jaguar independent rear suspension in it. You get your shock absorbers and your rear springs, your gas tank will go in there. And then here's that that amazing uh, rear axle. You can see it it's mounted up top and then you have the little differentials in here to go down um, and all the other linkages. And then our exhaust pipe going over the top of that. And here we have our body assembly, the little hood and the hood hinge. Dashboard in two pieces, easy to paint on the inside. The radiator and radiator grill support going in, uh, as well as the rear body panel. And then our front suspension here, all independent of course. The shock absorber is coming down, almost like a Ford F style. And then over here, whoops, we have our wheels going together. So these are much like the AMT wheels. You've got a backing plate, a wheel retainer, a tire, and then the small wheel here. These were 13 inch tires. And we've got our grill with our headlights going in, mounting up to a front body panel. My sister had a dark green one of these in real life. It wasn't the tuner though. Then all our glass will go in, glues from the outside inward, which is interesting. Uh, then we get our front bumper here and a front spoiler and our rear chrome bumper. And then at the end we have our two decal placements. The first one being the black Datsun 510 decals and then the second being the red and blue Datsun 510 decals here. So pretty cool. You could build this a couple of different little ways and again it being a tuner. So now let's take a look at our plastic components. And here we have our little Datsun 510 body and it, it is very, very much like my sister's. In fact, 100%. It's got the little grill right here in the sail panel. Right there. <laughs> and the little side marker lights, as well as the door handle. Very good representation of this car. Also has the vents across the top, with the windshield wipers, and the mounts for the front shock absorbers. I suppose these ones are adjustable in here, since this is the tuner kit. Now, it doesn't have the back or the front on it. However, the beauty of, you know, almost building this thing is there's the back panel there. Uh, not quite the best fit. Needs a little more along the sides. Still, you can see the nice back panel there. Just where my thumb is, there's a 510 stamped in there. And it's got the taillights molded in place. The hood is here, which was also cut off. There's no bracing underneath, but there's a spot for the hood hinges. And the hood does fit nicely onto the body. And then we've got our little front piece right there, which will spread the front fenders apart a little bit. Still, all in all, a very nice representation of the Datsun 510. And here's the floor pan and chassis of the Datsun 510. Of course, this was a unibody car, so everything is all there together. And here's the floorboards. This is for the race edition because there's no carpet in here. But I remember my sister's was really rusty and the floor pans were rusted right out. My dad fabricated some new ones out of sheet 10 and pop riveted them into place. It worked. Anyway, you can see all the nice things here. If I turn it over, there's lots of detail underneath. The little plates where uh, you would 
have your feet when you're sitting down. There's part of the subframe, and then of course being unibody, you would have the rocker panels here, and then going into the back as well. So how does this fit onto the body? Well, I would say pretty decently. Just got to spread it out a little bit. And there. Fits in place very nicely. Of course, with this being unibody, you can put a bit of glue right along here and here, and then hold it in place on the sides, which would be an accurate glue joint for the car. You can see the wheel wells go right up to the top, right into the top of the shock towers, and they fit in very nicely. Okay, so let's take a look at the other components. And here we have all the interior components for the Datsun 510 that I started to work on. Here you can see the two side panels and their nice detail. We have the seat back and rear package shelf. The rear bench seat with the bottom glued on. The two bucket seats with the, bo the bottom part glued on. And the backs of the bucket seats. And then our dashboard is molded in two pieces. So quickly, I'll just take up a couple of these and show you. There's all that nice door detail with the window cranks and the uh, crank to open the door. And here on the back panel we have nice detail in there. Little holes for your roll bar if you wish. The back package shelf there. The seats have a nice tuck and roll or texture pattern onto them. Much like the real Datsun 510. And then here's our dashboard with all the nice gauges in it. There we go. <laughs> and the dashboard top, which actually has the little grill for the window defroster. So, very nicely well detailed. So here is our first sprue tree. And of course there's been pieces removed from the interior. So I have the exhaust manifold here, the racing style. There's that hood hinge the front brace for the front of the car and our in our uh, suspension components here front brake pedals and motor mounts and a bunch of other cool things so here I'll just bring this up to the camera so you guys can see we turn it over there's not really much of mold marks here to have to deal with so that's always nice and there's the detail on that exhaust pipe so Again, some pretty cool things from Ravel here. Let's take a look at some of the other trees. Now this parts tree must have had the majority of interior and hood and body pieces on it because there's not much left. We do have the gas tank, the battery, and the exhaust pipe as well as the license plate over here. So again, pretty crisp on the fuel cell and the battery. Apart from that, not too much else going on. So let's see the next part tree. Now this tree has our wheel backs on it, as well as those retaining clips, much like the AMT kits. We have our shock absorbers, and these little teeny parts here. Not quite sure what they are. The front springs, the brakes, as well as the shock absorbers here for the front end. A sway bar, and then the rear axle and rear suspension. The fan, the radiator, and the front of the car here. So you can see there's some old marks underneath and whatnot. You can deal with those with your number um, 16 X-Acto blade. And there's that rear axle. This is so much like the real Datsun 510. It's unbelievable. And these are our final white components for this kit. We have the firewall, the steering box and column, the differential, the steering wheel, the belts and pulleys. This piece here is the top of the differential or the bottom depending on how you're looking at it. The oil pan and the front engine cover and the engine was broken apart so I've just got it here. This is our four cylinder with the little uh, four speed or five speed transmission. So looking at this you get quite a nice firewall in there. And the detail on the steering wheel is nice as well as the rear springs. Turning it over, there are a couple of 
mold marks on the firewall, but they may not be any problem. All depends on how this locates. And then bring up the engine here. See a lot of nice there we are, detail on the block and everything. So again, this should go together and look quite nice. So now we get into my favorite part of all these model kits, which is the chrome parts tree. Now I noticed I made a little mistake in the video because I had two pieces of chrome tree, this one plus this one, and I realized this was actually put in from a Chevy Corvair model kit because look at the headlights are Corvair style. So what this was doing in my box, I have no clue. I did that to myself, so my apologies. If you get the box of this, you're only going to get this one chrome tree in here. This, of course, is a Datsun 510 one with these nice mag wheels. The four carburetors on here. The Datsun valve cover. As well as the bumpers, a fire extinguisher, and the grill. And the grill is molded on the back side. My sister would recognize this right away. Just a little black wash in there and paint on the Datsun 510, or the Datsun emblem and you'd have it made. So again, some pretty cool chrome here. Next up, I thought I'd put two components together in my review here. So we have the glass with the headlights in it, and then the side windows, and the front and rear glass, as well as our tires. And the tires, unlike other tires in our reviews, they don't have any lettering along the side, but they do have a nice little tread pattern in here. The camera can pick it up. And that's about it. They are squishy, so you can squish them up over the wheels. Just move those out of the way. You can see some nice detail on the headlights. And there's another little clear thing. I'm not sure where that's from without consulting the instructions. But again, glass is nice and clear. And it glues from the outside, which is going to be an interesting challenge. So there's our tires and glass. And here, last but not least, is our decal sheet. And there's actually a version A and a version B on here with optional sponsor decals and decals that are universal to the Statson 510. Sadly, mine have cracked. I don't know if you can see this too well. And that means that I can't use these, <laughs> which is a real shame because it would be nice on here. Anyway, we get these nice white gauges in here, the Datsun emblem, these are speakers and different grills. Then we have decals for our side marker lamps. Then uh, the nice black Datsun 510 and California license plates. Older ones, the black ones with the yellow writing on them. And then here we have some Nissan license plates on our version B. Or you can use these more modern California license plates. And then we've got Datsun in red. And it's such a shame I can't use these. I guess I waited too long, hey? Then we've got all these different sponsors. Humbert. And a bunch of other guys. So I'm just going to bring this up to the camera just a little bit there. See what I mean? The cracks. So if I put this into water, it's going to explode. And I know some guys, they clear coat these and then you let the paint kind of be a bridge to there. Maybe I can give it a try, but it will still be cracked. <laughs> At any rate, there is the decal sheet, and I hope yours is a fresh one. And that completes our review of the 1968 Datsun 510 from Ravel. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great review of the 1968 Datsun 510. And I know this is an older kit, but I make these videos so that if you're out there and you find one of these and you really want it, or if Ravel's going to repop this thing, you get a first-hand view of what the earlier edition of the kit looks like, so you can compare it with the new ones and all kinds of other cool things. So, don't forget to help support me by liking this video, subscribing, hitting that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first one to see it. Let's get this video up to 100 likes. Tell all your friends and family about it. Don't forget to check out our website, www.monster-hobbies.ca for all our model cars that are available right now for you to purchase. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.